Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the GRE tunnels with routing instances Learning Byte. Okay, so here is our example. And first, I want to point out the topology. In this topology, we have two different VSREX devices, VSREX1 and VSREX2. And those two devices are connected together through the internet. And then we have user1 that connects into VSREX1. And next, we have server1 that connects with VSREX2. And what we need to do here is we need to first have the internet zone in a routing instance. So that's the zone that connects VSREX1 directly to the internet. That zone is going to be called internet. And so we need to put that in a routing instance. Then we need to create a GRE tunnel from VSRX1 to VSRX2. And we need to ensure that user1 can communicate with server1. So we're going to be initiating traffic from user1 to server1. And that needs to go through that GRE tunnel for the communication. Now, one thing I do want to point out is VSRX2 is already set up, so we don't need to worry about that. And so we just need to configure VSRX1. And so with that, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI of VSRX1 and get this started. All right, here is the CLI for VSRX1. So let's go ahead and jump into configuration mode and get this started. So let's begin by configuring the gr-0 slash 0 0.0 interface. And that is the interface that we'll use to create a GRE tunnel. And to begin, we need to create the tunnel source, specify that source address. So this is where we're sourcing the tunnel from. And that's going to be the IP address here. And that IP address is the IP address that is applied to the GIGI001 interface that is connecting VSRX1 to the internet. And I do want to point out that Gigi000 on VSRX1 is connecting to the user1 device. And then we need to specify a destination. And with that destination, we need to specify the remote interface, that is the interface on VSRX2 that is connecting to the internet. That's going to be 10.111.113.2. And then we need to specify the IP address for the tunnel itself. Now, you technically don't need to specify an IP address. You can leave this unnumbered, but it doesn't make sense not to do it because you can just use a private IP address to do this because this IP address that you apply to the tunnel interface doesn't need to be routable on the internet. And it makes it a lot easier for troubleshooting. And if you're adding something like OSPF with it, then you need an IP address. So there's no reason not to do an IP address on this interface. So then let's go ahead and Put that interface in a security zone. And next, let's configure the routing instance. Call this internet-ri. So internet routing instance is what that stands for. And we'll set the instance type to virtual router. We'll specify an interface of first the physical interface. This is the interface that connects VSRX1 to the internet. And then we'll specify the GR interface. And next we need to configure some static routes. And we need to configure a default static route since this is the internet zone that leads to the internet. We need to specify a default route that tells this SRX how to access any host on the internet. And we'll specify just the IP address that is associated with the next hop. And then we need to specify a route for the network of the server one device. And we need to point that through the GR interface. We can see those are the static routes. Let's look at the configuration for the routing instance. You can see the static routes, the default static route pointing to the next hop, and then the static route that points to the server one network. And then we set both interfaces, the physical interface that is in this zone that points towards the internet as well as the GR interface and set the instance type to virtual router. And next we need to edit the routing options for the main routing instance. In here there's a default route that points to the next hop and since we move that interface to a routing instance, the Gigi001 interface, that next hop is no longer available. So we need to be able to tell the main routing instance how to get to the internet RI routing instance so the user one device can reach hosts on the internet. Define a default route and we say next table 
and we specify the inet.0 table for the internet.ri routing instance. And lastly, we need to configure a security policy. You can see here we have a security policy. It says coming from the user zone, going to the internet zone, then permit that traffic. And that's going to be great for user one needing to reach anything on the internet. However, it's not so great for traffic that needs to go through the GR interface. Recall that GR interface, we put it in its own security zone called the tunnel zone. So we need to craft a security policy that allows for that. Let's call this GRE for the policy. And we'll match on from zone users to zone tunnel. And then we'll specify the source address, any, same thing with the destination address, as well as the application. Then we'll set that to permit and things look good. Let's go ahead and commit that configuration now and send some traffic between user one and server one. So here is the VSRX VR device. Now this device is special. It's split up into multiple routing instances to simulate user one and server one. And so what we can do here is we can send traffic to the server one address, which is 10.102.1.100 using routing instance user one. That'll send traffic from user one to server one. And it's not working as you would imagine. That's not what we want. So let's go ahead and jump back to VSRX one and do a little troubleshooting to attempt to figure out what's going on. Let's look at the session table and see what we have in here. Okay, so we have some traffic that is going towards server one and it is coming in the Gigi 000 interface. Recall that is the interface that is pointing towards user one and we are not receiving anything on the GR000 interface for the return traffic. And that's a problem for sure. So to further troubleshoot this, let's look at the log messages, see if anything shows up that will give us an idea of what the problem is. All right, so I want you to look at, there's a message here that says GRE input, dropping packet, GRE IF found in global database for destination address, gives that destination source address, gives the source. It's a little cryptic, but that does kind of lead us to believe that, oh, there might be a misconfiguration with the GR interface. So let's go ahead and look at that. And this looks pretty normal for a normal GRE interface configuration. However, this is not a normal GRE interface setup. We're using a routing instance here. So we do have to add an additional statement under the tunnel hierarchy. We specify the destination routing instance, which in this case is going to be internet-ri. Let's go ahead and commit the configuration and see how this changes. Let's first look at the session table. And this looks good. We have traffic coming in the GE000 interface, and then it's coming back through the GR000 interface. And if we go to the VSRX VR, yes, we have traffic flowing. This is perfect. So that does bring us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we talked about configuring GRE tunnels with routing instances, and then we verified GRE tunnels with routing instances. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.